Welcome to this new video. We will try to solve the following problem. The force acting on a particle of mass m is given by the following equation. The force is equal to k, which is a positive constant, times v, that's the velocity, times x, that's the position. Now the particle passes through the origin with speed v0, v0, at time t equals 0. And the question is, find x as a function of time. Now in this video, I'm not going to complete the whole solution. I will only solve a part of the problem and I will leave the other part to another video. Before we start solving the problem, let's think about the, the problem again. So we have the x-axis and I chose the origin somewhere here. Now at time equals zero, the particle passes through the origin with velocity v0. Now I took v0 to be to the right. So v0 is positive according to my choice. While x at the beginning is zero. So now if you look at the force at x equals zero, the force is zero. However, because the object is moving with v0, it will continue moving to the right. And x will start to change from zero. Now, once x is not equal to zero, then the force will start to take a value, which is equal to its velocity times x times a constant. Now, by checking the signs, you notice that the force is positive. So as the object moves to the right, it is affected by a force which is to the right, and so and hence the object will accelerate to the right and its velocity will start increasing to the right. Now the force depends on two variables, on the velocity and also on the position. So you can imagine as the object moves to the right, it increases its position, x is increasing, velocity is also increasing, and so the force is getting bigger and bigger. Now, how does this object move with time? We want to find x, the position of this object as a function of time. So let's start solving the problem. We're gonna start by writing Newton's second law, mass times acceleration, dv by dt, which is equal to the force. Now in this problem, we are, have only one force to take care of. Now, because the velocity, sorry, because the force is given as a function of velocity and x, I don't want to keep time in this equation, so I'm going to use the chain rule to change from time to position. So I will write mass dv by dx times dx by dt. And remember again that dx by dt is just the velocity. So this expression can write it as mass times the velocity, which is this factor here, times dv by dx. And this should equal the force. That's k times x times v. So we got this equation here and that we need now to, to try to solve. Now what happens is usually for students, once they see this kind of equation, they notice that there is velocity on the left and there is velocity on the right, and they usually will cancel velocity from both sides. Now, I would always urge you to be careful with such thing. Because you are dividing by a variable, and who knows, this variable may take the value zero. So that, in this case, you are dividing by zero both sides of an equation and this would can create problems and make things not working well to be careful whenever i see an equation having a variable on both sides i prefer to do the following i will move one side to the other and take v as a common factor so i will write this the above equation as here so I took V as a common factor, and what is left inside the bracket is mass dV by dx 
minus kx equal to 0. Now, for this to be 0, there are two solutions. One solution is that velocity is 0. So the object will have velocity equal to 0. And because the velocity is 0, so the force will be 0. But if you think about it, this, this case is not important for us because we are given that the particle is moving with initial velocity v0 and v0 is not zero. So we know that the velocity will not be zero and we can get rid of it because of that. So what is left for us is to consider the bracket should equal to zero. I'm just saying this to be, for students to be careful Many times it works out if you divide the velocity from the beginning, but be careful. Sometimes it can create a problem and to be very careful, we tend not to encourage that and prefer to use this method in solving the problem. So anyway, we are left now with this equation saying that dv by dx equal k over mass. So I moved mass to the other side times x. And now we have this simple differential equation, which can be solved. I'm going to move dx to the other side and integrate both sides. It's an easy equation and the answer is v is equal. The constant of integration and you can check that it is v0, the initial velocity, plus the integration of this factor, which is k over 2m x squared. Now you can check when x is 0, the velocity should equal to v0. So now we found the relation between velocity and position. I will leave you with this uh, equation and come back in another video to continue solving this problem. I just want to make another comment. Be careful. What we found here is the velocity as a function of position. However, such equation does not really give you a clear picture of how the particle moves. It's always I find that it is the dependence on time that's really important and that gives you a more explicit picture of how the particle moves. So if we really want to understand how the particle move, I will continue and try to find a time dependence. But I will leave this to another video. Thank you.